This is the P500 from the company Acta Nonverba. If you're interested in hearing more about this knife, keep watching. All right, bit of a backstory on how I came to have this knife in my possession. First off, um, it, I did not purchase it, but it was given to me as a gift, not by the company Acna, Acta Nonverba, but by Jonathan Heffron. And Jonathan Heffron has the YouTube channel Wingman115. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, are already familiar with Jonathan. And about a year ago, Jonathan reviewed this knife on his channel and he had made a comment that um, he would like to see what a real bushcrafter could do with it and in addition to what he did with it so I said why don't you send it to this real bushcrafter and he did so it's kind of like put up or shut up you know um, so I have it in my possession and I've had it for a good amount of time I actually debated whether or not I was going to review the knife but having used it there are some things I really like about it and there are some things I'm not too crazy about so what I thought I would do is start off by going over a little bit about the knife itself its design intent and philosophy a little bit about the company acting on Verba as well as the specifications for this knife and then of course Course we'll do some demonstrations with it. All right, quickly, I'll show you the knife in the sheath. I'm going to take the knife out so I can give you a few close-ups of the sheath, and then, of course, we'll focus in on the knife itself. Let me take the knife out. So the sheath, very well-made, crafted leather, as you can see, all finished off very nicely. It is getting some use marks on it, which, of course, is what you would expect. Open front design for quick drawing. Double dome snap retention works well. It sits on the belt. It rides a little high on my belt. Um, yeah, it's just a good functional sheaf is what I'll say about it. However, I'll also say that I don't particularly like using it on my belt. It's not taking the knife out of the sheaf. It's actually the challenge of putting it back in. You really have to be able to look down and see what you're doing. It's not like a drop pouch where you can just drop the knife in. Um, otherwise, good quality sheath. Now, let me put that aside, bring the knife back in. So this is the Acta Nonverba P500 knife. This is considered their flagship knife, the largest of the knives they have in their lineup. They have a lot of outdoor knives, folding knives, and military knives as well. So what can I say about this? Let me give you a few close-ups. First off, you can read there it says the P500. On the other side is the stylized A and V for Acton on Verba. On the spine itself, acting on verba, which stands for action, not words. And of course, that says, let the knife speak for itself. And it will. It does. It does perform as it's intended. Well, what is its intended use? Where is the inspiration and the design for this knife originate? Well, it is, well, at least when I looked at it, when Jonathan uh, showed it on his channel, I said, that's definitely inspired by the Tom Brown Tracker. And it is. It has got a lot of the characteristics of a Tom Brown Tracker, not all all of them, but it, you can see where the resemblance is there. But at the same time, that weight forward and curvature uh, suggests kukri. And that's exactly what Acta Non Verba has to say about it. This is a combination tracker kukri design. But does it function like a tracker and or a kukri? Well, we'll get to that in a few moments time. So let's go over the specifications for this knife and then we'll go from there. So to start with, it is made with a Swedish steel known as Schleppner. It is an upgraded D2 variation known for its edge holding and toughness. And I'll say two things about it. I did chip this knife through my own use, not because of any fault with the steel, and it took a lot of work to bring the edge back. So uh, like I often say about keeping knives sharp is a lot better than trying to sharpen a dull knife. So that is what I'll have to say about that. Maintain the steel. If you do chip it, roll it, or let it get dull, it will take some work to bring it back. But once it takes an edge, it takes a wonderful edge and does hold on to it until you do something silly like I did. All right, so that out of the way. The blade hardness is 58 on the Rockwell scale. It has G10 handles. I'll speak to the handles a little bit more in a few moments time. The overall length of this knife is 13 inches tip to pommel, which is 330 millimeters. 
The length of the blade itself is seven and a half inches, which is 190 millimeters. The thickness of the blade is five millimeters, which is 0.2 of an inch. And the weight is 13 ounces or 377 grams. Now, a few more things about the style of this knife is that the spine is rounded all the way down and all the way around the knife. Everything is, is rounded, except of course for the sharp edge. Um, a couple things on that. One, it's smooth. You're not going to find any, any uh, irritation from sharp edges. Um, it is what they call proud. If you notice, you can see that the spine of the knife actually comes above the top of the scales. So they refer to that as proud. And it's, it's a style. It's not necessarily a style that everyone uses. And I don't think I have a, anything negative to say about it in particular. Um, you will also notice that it's rounded all the way down the back, which means this is not designed for striking a ferrous Syrian rod or using for scraping fat woods or any other type of, of scraping action. It just won't function well like that. Could you smooth it off? Probably. I don't think I would. I think I would not rely on this knife for fire starting. If I was desperately in need of striking my ferrous serum rod and couldn't find a sharp rock and had nothing else in my pocket, I'd probably just use the blade and then worry about sharpening it back up later. But that's not an issue for most people because they carry multiple ways, or at least should carry multiple ways of lighting a fire. Uh, let's just look at the grip a little bit and talk about its design. You can see it has a, I'm going to call it a false choil here. There is just a little bit bit of a choil right here for a grip. I can't say it's especially functional. I can't say that it's harmful either. It doesn't cause hot spots or anything, but it's just, I suppose it's style more than anything else. You can see that it widens towards the pommel. And the design of that, of course, is that as you chop, even though this is a light knife, it is weight forward. And as you chop, it wants to move forward of your hand. So the widened pommel is designed to help hold it into your hand. Do use a lanyard if you're chopping though, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. It still wants to move forward, at least in my hands, I still find it wants to move forward, and a lanyard is pretty much essential for chopping purposes. There is a choil forward of the guard, which is a minimal guard, of course, but there is a choil here. It is rounded, and it does allow me to get forward of the guard with my index finger, so I can get right up to the edge here, so I can get much more control, because a big knife, you want to get as far forward on the edge as you can if you're doing things like uh, shavings or feather work or anything like that, and we'll talk more about that. And that's probably where we'll start. Look at the grind itself of the knife. It is a saber grind, but it has two different grind angles. So the forward half of the blade, the grind is not as steep. It's a little bit less steep. It still has a secondary edge on it. And that is because that will make this portion of the blade or the edge a little bit tougher, having more meat behind it, more steel behind the edge, which is intended for chopping. And it does, it does chop well. And then when you move back to this area, this obviously is intended for maybe feather stick type of work because the grind is higher. It's a little bit thinner and a little bit more narrow towards the edge and uh, yeah so it does help with getting thinner uh, peels or thinner curls off of a stick there is a false wedge on the back I think that's a bit of the military heritage on it, and you can see it is somewhat drop point. Um, do, I don't particularly have anything to say about the false wedge. I don't favor them. I don't disfavor them as long as they don't impact the point strength. Now, this being a five millimeter blade, even though it looks like a fairly fine point when it comes out, there's still a lot of metal behind the final little bit. So this should, and I won't abuse it to see how long it will, but this should resist sticking into wood and prying it sideways. Knives aren't meant for that. That's not what they're meant for. However, if you had to do it with this knife, I think you could probably do so with little risk of damage in it. But why push it and see if it will actually will damage it? So, all right. So there is one comment I want to make about the blade and the grind. And uh, yeah, let's just talk about this for a second. So on the Tom Brown tracker, this portion of the blade, I think it's quarter round or half round. I'll put the correct term for it up here on the screen. I just don't remember off the top of my head right now has a number of different functions and one of the functions is it allows you to reverse your blade and pull upwards on a stick or pull downwards on a stick and the stick will catch here and it'll get some really really fine curls and I'll demonstrate how well this one does that and uh, the problem was when this arrived there wasn't much of a 
round here, much of a curve, it kind of from about here forward, it just kind of sloped down to this point. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll put a picture of what this blade looked like before I modified it. Yes, I modified it. Now, I'm second guessing myself and whether I should have modified it. I will tell you it improved the performance in that area, but I guess I'm guessing whether or not it was actually worth all the work. So what I did is I wanted to create more of an angle right here in the corner. So it took me a bit of time. I started with a file, a round file, and got it roughed out. And then I started moving through grits of wet dry sandpaper on a wooden dowel until I was able to reestablish a nice edge and it worked. It was a lot of work, but it worked. You can actually see it polished quite up when you get up to the high levels of uh, sandpaper here. And it did improve its performance without taking anything away from the blade. Not necessary in hindsight for that to do that, but it does make it a little bit better when it comes to gaining those curls, either drawing down through or drawing up through, as you'll see in a moment. All right, I think what I'll do now is move on to demonstrations and see if I can't do this some justice and make John proud of me. All right, I just took a moment to change out the paracord because the piece that was in on the knife was a little bit too short for use with gloves on, and I do want to be able to use my gloves. So I'll just show you how I like to use a lanyard like this. In fact, it's still a little bit long, but it'll be functional. So I stuck my thumb through like this, and I wrap it over the back of my hand, and then I can grab onto the knife. It could be a little bit tighter for this purpose, but uh, I think it'll work just fine. Now, the piece of wood that I am demonstrating chopping on is about a two inch piece of maple. It's about six feet long. I'm only gonna take about a 30 inch piece off right here. And uh, then we'll use the same piece for the rest of the demonstrations. I'm working on a bench here that I'll have to hold the knife good ways away from uh, where the knife will land. And uh, yeah, all right, so to use this knife, you want to stay on the forward half of the blade where the sweet spot is for chopping. So let's just get her done. Getting a little bit of bounce here. Let's see if I can do something about that. There we go. Okay, same piece of wood, like I mentioned, about 30 inches. And I will baton this into quarters. Now, what I'm doing is, and I find this fairly helpful, is where the transition is from the forward half to the rear half of the blade, is to use that as a bit of a point to start the split off, as a place to place my knife and actually start. And then, of course, no surprise there. A little off center. Let me split this one. I'm going to be using one of these for a feather stick, and so I got to find a good one to do that with. All right, so no problem splitting. Splitting, you wouldn't imagine anything else. All right, I chose one of the splits that we just uh, made from that log piece of wood, and I want to turn it, it into a tent peg. So I think I'll take it off right about here, get about a 12-inch stick off of it. And uh, yes, I'd probably saw it otherwise, but in this case, I want to test this for cross batoning. So uh, again, I'll find a place to place the knife, and we'll go across the grain, because that can be kind of hard on a blade. So let's just see where this goes. Oop, send it for a fly, let me go get it. I guess it hit it hard enough to knock the bark off of it, but clean cut. Let's have a look at the blade. No rolls, no chips. No, no damage at all, none, none expected, none seen. So also the next thing I'm probably gonna do I would normally work on an edge of it, but I think I'll work on the back flat of it, is to create the notch. So for this, I'll make the notch right about here, and it starts with just a gentle tap in. And then from there, I just want to clean out the notch. This is not the way I normally make 
at tent peg, but the point of the demonstration is the same regardless, is that this knife likes to carve. So that's not an example of tent peg making, making. it's more an example of what the knife is capable of. And of course the next thing is I want to put a point on this, but I think I'll do that with chest lever. So this is one of the pl places that the knife doesn't do especially well of. I mean it'll function as you'll see, but what I don't like about the knife here is holding it in reverse grip like this. I just find that where the, sw uh, the palm swell uh, comes down, it doesn't allow my hand to get in there necessarily as comfortably as I'd like to. However, having said that, it'll still function as you'll see. And then I'll use this end of the knife, the carving end of it, the closer to the handle, for the drawing of wood. And there's no question that this will hog wood off in a hurry. A little bit more of a point on it. All right, I think that's a fine enough point for driving into the ground. Now, if you're making these tent pegs and you want them to last any length of time, again, it's not a tent peg demonstration, but more a demonstration of the knife skill or the skill or what the knife can do is you want to chamfer the top edge. And what that does is it helps resist splitting out when it's hit from above by a mallet or something. So this is where I usually use a scissor cut like this. And uh, what I want to demonstrate is in fact, you can, you get a lot of leverage with that long knife and you get it just enough curve on that to take the edges off just nicely. You can do it a little bit further back for a bit more control. All right, so that rounded the edge off just nicely. All right, earlier when I talked about using that quarter round, half round, whichever it is called, for curling, this is what I mean. You can use it in reverse draw like this or in forward draw like this. And I'll use it in both. You can see I'm working off the side of my leg, not in between my legs for the obvious reasons. But if you get a little bit of practice with it, you can get some really, really fine curls going. Now the curls are coming off of the stick, but that's an example of the type of curl you can get with that little quarter round just by drawing it up the knife and varying the angle a little bit. Working slowly here. Now, what if I did it in reverse? In this case, I think what I'll do is prop it with my knee. Little, little fine curls with it. Of course, you can still use it to feather with the back portion of the blade, choke up on it a little bit, get into that choil, and the same thing can happen. Someone asked after I did the preview, you know, would this, or they, they said, I bet you that's a great feather sticker. Well, I don't know if I'd call this a great feather stick, but it will, the knife will certainly do its part. It's just up to the user to maximize it. So another use for a knife like this is snap chops, just little chops on small branches like this. If I was collecting these up for a browse bed or something to sit on, you want to know that just a quick chop near the base is going to work just fine. Doesn't take long to gather up a few branches that you're going to need. All right, let's see if we can wrap this video up with a few closing comments. So there are a few skills that I did use this knife for over the last year that I didn't demonstrate in this video, mostly for the sake of time. One of them is how you can use this knife as a draw knife. And it's simply take you the knife, hammer it into a piece of wood like that, and then draw it down the piece of wood. 
that rear section of the blade is ideally suited for getting some very, very fine curls. And with the added leverage you get from pulling in this direction, you can fashion a stick into whatever it is you need to uh, quite quickly. Uh, another one is actually driving this into a piece of wood so you can drive it directly into a log, a stump or whatever. And because the tang is slightly exposed, you can't quite see it underneath the paracord there, you can hammer on that without any risk of damage damage to the scales and then with this driven into the wood now you can feather along the same uh, edge. Well, actually, it's even feather holding in my hand like that. So that's not what I intended. But it will work well for feathering in that uh, fashion as well. I don't do that as often because really I don't have to with it working so well by choking up on the blade and feathering and using this portion of the blade right here to catch the uh, edges on. You can actually do some very, very fine feathering with that. So those are just a, a few of the skills that I've practiced with this knife. Now, let me give you my impressions of it. As a splitter, it works great. So for batoning through wood, I have no fear or no hesitation of batoning this at five millimeter thick and that high, that's not high saber, that saber grind, this is tough enough for all the batoning that um, I'm likely ever gonna do with it. It will chop, but not well. It is a light knife. It is long and it is quite thin but it has forward weight on it. So snap chopping really, really well. Chopping the big pieces of wood, well to start with, I don't, I don't particularly uh, do a lot of chopping. I'm not a believer of chopping with a knife. It's not an ax. Uh, I'll saw wood before I chop with a knife. Can it do it? Yes, it can. You saw that it will. Do I like doing it? Do I choose to do it voluntarily? No, I don't because that's not what it's for. But snap cutting, yeah, absolutely. This is light and fast and you can do a lot of snap cuts. So you can clean off a small tree or a branch or whatever you want very quickly with this knife. For that, it is a legitimate chopper, that type of chopping. And the other thing that I'm not a real fan of is the thickness of the scales. Now, they're grippy. This G10 has a very, very grippy surface. And that's the good part. The bad part is it's narrow through here. So maybe most people will not have an issue with it, but with my XL, double XL hands, I find that it's just too narrow through here. I may consider taking the scales off and putting a liner in just to make them a little fatter this way. Uh, the pommel, the flared pommel does work, but not as well as I would have liked to have. Again, probably because of the narrow grip overall. Now, having said all those things, this is a quality piece of construction. It's a very, very well executed knife in terms of its uh, construction and its uh, manufacturing. I just don't think it's either a tracker or a kukri. Inspired by them, but it doesn't live up to the reputation that the tracker and the kukri uh, do. Having said that, it's still a nice knife. It still does everything that you will want a big knife to do without the weight of some of the bigger ones that I've reviewed on this channel. So it has its pros, it has its cons. I like it. It's not my first choice for a chopper. It's not my first choice for a carving knife. It's not my first choice for a splitting knife, but it does them all. So what can I say? It does all of those things. Okay, those are my thoughts on the P500 P500 from Acta Nonverba, and uh, I'd open it up to you. Do you have any comments, any thoughts, any questions about this knife? If you do, please put them in the comment section below. John, I'm not sure if I lived up to your expectations of what a real bushcrafter is, but I have a few skills that I can I tried to demonstrate on this knife. And in the meantime, folks, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.